Excuse me while I finish swallowing my peanut butter and jelly on a pita breakfast. <laughs> it's okay, yesterday I had um, Chef Boyardee spaghetti and meatballs out of a can <laughs> for breakfast and Tom's like, you're eating that cold? And I'm thinking, does it really matter? <laughs> Ted just walked in. What's yep. the news? I got a job. McKenzie River Pizza Company. Awesome. And I just sent out a bunch of emails and they called me within five minutes. Now I just need to find a, a rent. A, a place rent to a live. Room. Yep. Well, congratulations. Yep. Yay. <laughs> Not bad for less than 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what Tom's doing. Yeah, I just, I saw him in town actually. Oh, really? Did he yep. say anything about work? They, the... um, he was going to like the supermarket. I'm sure he's contemplating. Yeah. <laughs> Casino job. <laughs> yeah. Casino job. <laughs> Tom just called. Or he needs something to look forward to. So he applied for a job at a supermarket for like stocking shelves. And he was nervous this morning a little bit, like whether he'd get it or if they'd even call him back after he stopped in yesterday. So they did call him this morning. They set up an interview this morning at 10. I did let him know about his red skin that some people, they'll know that he's a drinker and that the risk that he has interviewing for jobs is that people may worry that he is going to drink on the job, steal to buy alcohol or that he is just gonna take a job for like a week to make money to then go buy alcohol. There's a stigma attached, I told him, unfortunately. And we had a chat about going to Arizona because he doesn't handle cold well. And Whitefish is described as a place that has really short summers. Why would you live in a place that doesn't make you feel well, that makes your body hurt? But he was flip-flopping because both Ted and Tom are struggling, like trying to find a reasonable place to live here for rent. There's only like three places that came up. Rooms in a, in a share situation. Anyway, it wasn't good. He just called me. He's all excited. He's like, I got the job, I got the job. It was so pure, this 63 year old guy riding around on his bicycle. And he's like, they really loved me. I could tell they really loved me. And I'm like, I'm sure they did. You have a fantastic personality. I'm sure you interviewed really well. He's like, it's full time. And guess what? The people that work there said that there's a woman that owns apartments and I could get a room that maybe some guy's moving out. Everything's changing around for me. And I'm like, well. This is the high you get, right? Everything's new and exciting. So we'll see what happens. Because then you start the grind of the job. Then the cold sets in. Hopefully the room will come through because it's not 100%. But it's beautiful to, you know, this moment of joy that he's feeling. This exuberance coming through like a kid calling his mother. Anyway, I'm really happy to be a part of it. Just to be here with watching Lee's transition and watching Tom's transition and watching Ted's transition. It's really been a special experience having absolutely nothing to do with bike packing. So I'm packing up my stuff here. I am debating between on the Wild West alternate route, which sort of runs parallel to the freeway on dirt roads up to Eureka, or if I should just get on the Great Divide. And the guys that just came off the Great Divide said that there's a, like a glacier lake at the top, but I am looking at like a climb, they said for like 25 miles which would be today to get up to this lake area. To Red Meadow. Heading into my favorite pizza place, Second Street Pizza, because why? They have $2 slices. And I figured this would be an appropriate send off. Mm. That's... Mm, yummy, 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 yummy. It's extra yummy because it's only $2. Ironically, right down from the pizza joint, is Glacier Cycler Reef. I wasn't gonna pop in because it's so late in the day. I think it's like 1.30, I need to hit the road. Since the tension was messed with on the chain, I just wanted someone to look at it and he slammed because it's summer and he was so nice to take my bike. He lifted it up. He didn't charge me. He was really generous to do that for me last minute and he oiled the chain, he tightened the pedals and we're hoping that maybe that's where the clicking sound is coming from because I'm getting a click click for like the last two weeks and I think it's coming from a pedal. He just tweaked it. He made sure the tension was in the proper spot, the, the chain tension. He said the road into Pole Bridge is really dusty and rivety and so he gave me a little shortcut that's going to be a smoother ride. He said right before a creek and it's a gated road, you come down, it will drop you one mile below the town of Pole Bridge. But that was also really generous of him so thank you Mike from Glacier Cyclery. Just pedaling along. 
on the east side of Whitefish Lake. This is facing straight south and you can't see right now, but the shoreline is like a turquoise. The water is really, really beautiful in Montana. Here is the split where we start to do the gradual climb. I actually was looking at a route. I think it's called the Whitefish Alternate Route. If you go to bikepacking.com, you'll find it. I think you go up this dirt road, but you turn left at some point and it brings you back to uh, 93 which is a freeway that runs pretty much between like it's going whitefish up to Eureka. It's not a safe road to ride. It's no one recommends it. It's really bad. People actually yell at you. They actually map together a dirt road that kind of runs parallel to it. The reason I'm going to do the Great Divide section is because it does a big C, like it, a backward C and it goes out towards Glacier. Then it curves up into the wilderness and goes into Eureka. And I just figured it's such a unique spot and space. And, and I'll never really come up here again. I don't, so <laughs> friends and family know this about me, but I don't go back. Like I don't repeat. I, I'm not interested even in doing the same trail in the opposite direction. I mean, if you're taking a vacation or a trip, I'm not talking about your local neighborhood riding. It's such a unique little corner on the map. I figure I really should do it now so I have closure on this part of the United States of America. Making our way up. And here's an example of one of the things that I find a pain in the ass. It is rare to find anywhere to rest my bike to get water. And I know some people lay it on the side. I have those and I just don't want them bent. It is really hot. I am past a few streams and I thought, okay, I better not pass anymore. And I really should chug a liter to two liters of water. Look how beautiful and crystal clear this water is. Look how pookie bears! Any pookie bears in here? Got my clear. Hydro pack collapsible water bottle with the measurements on the side, which I love. Uh oh. I'm gonna put my water purifier. Oh man. Ah. Coming down the road, and I'm looking for a sign that's probably gonna say words like red meadow. Why? Because that's like the popular spot. Okay, we're gonna look at some signs now. There are no arrows going this way. This is the correct direction for the Great Divide. And also to get to Red Meadow. And they don't let you know where to go when you get to this intersection. So, there's many times that I think, am I doing something wrong? I'm not the smartest person in the room and I know that. They make an effort to make these beautiful signs and they're putting miles and it, they're clear, you can see them. So what happens is when it appears to be so organized and well done, I just assume, well, I must, I must be wrong. And then I go to the map and it confirms that I am correct. Maybe at the end of this trip, I'm gonna call the certain park services who does the signage and ask them some of these questions. I'm getting to the point where I need answers. I'm tired of just thinking everybody's a dumbass. <laughs> but there has to be some intelligent answer. And hopefully when I hear it, I'm gonna go, oh. Although I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> so anyway, yay. We're going in the right direction. When you turn onto the road with no sign, <laughs> it turns into packed dirt, which is fantastic. Cause it's like, I thought, oh boy, if I have to do this few mile climb, which I haven't hit yet on the gr loose gravel and all, I mean, it's just like night and day and how much distance you can get. Oh, look at those. Oh my goodness. Look how beautiful that is. That little spot there. Okay. How beautiful is this? This must be the little one that's before Red Meadow. I just ran into some people um, that turned around. They were driving. They said that it got too steep for them and they weren't sure how far to go to get to Red Meadow. It's about five miles up from this little lower lake. And then there was another couple there that said, yeah, it's really steep, but you look tough. You, you look like you can do it. And I'm thinking, yeah, but this is a sweet little pretty lake. So it's like, I could sleep here just cause I'm here now. And then I could go in the morning. It's just that since it's a steep climb and it's not hot, I feel like I just need to get the climb over with instead of starting out on a climb in the morning cause your body's not really stretched out. They guessed it was like a 6%, but for five miles, I'm gonna give it a shot. It's like 5.45 and what else am I gonna do? I'm not really ready to go to bed. But let's say I'm moving like three miles an hour. <laughs> I'll get there in a little over an hour 
which will bring me in around 6.30, just a quarter to seven, which is the perfect time to set up camp. And then I'm just sharing my thought process because like on these trips, you just don't know what to expect. It's like once you start, it's not like I'm gonna turn around and come back down. So it's like, okay, are you ready to commit to five miles of uphill dragging this bike? And uh, I'm committing and now it's documented. So let's see if I persevere after pedaling a half a mile. <laughs> Look at this beautiful road. It's like I'm riding into the abyss. Here's the start of the climb. So I pulled over because it's cliff shot time. But normally I don't take them this late because of bedtime and stuff, but based on how people have been describing this climb, they have me a little like freaked out. The road here is pretty gnarly, which sucks because that means my tires are gonna spin out and it's just gonna be even harder. Look at this old truck. It's awesome with the tire on the front. I wish a pickup would be heading in my direction. I jump in the back. One thing that I want to point out before I forget is like, I never, and I think I said this before, I never just jump on my bike and start pedaling really fast. I always go just a little bit of a roll because already a few times these go in here and they're meant, they go under this round bag, roll bag, to sort of cinch the roll bag tighter around the body. But if that comes out, which it just did, that metal hook actually, I just found it was just hanging and it was hooked on one of my spokes. So if I had really pedaled, I would have pulled the spoke. So what I'm learning is that although I love this bag, based on these straps um, and a lot of vibration, I mean, I don't have a problem with the bag in a sense. Like I just don't like the concept. Well, this is a nice welcome sign to the steeper part of the climb <laughs> where I know I'm gonna be doing a little bit of hike a bike. Look out Pookie Bear. Memories, oh memories. We haven't hiked a bike like this for a while together. I hope there's no more of this. This is the last of the hike a bike. I mean, there'll always be a little hike a bike, although I have to say, I'm really glad that nobody's around. I'm really worried about bears because I just don't oh, yeah, yeah. see any scat on the road. It's like they're not walking on the road. I'm talking out loud and I'm kind of grunting and breathing heavy. And the other thing about grizzlies and black bears is that they are so incredibly loud when they were walking through all this brush because it's so dense. And you just hear, it's like King Kong's coming. You just hear crash, crash. I am sweating like pig. What's that saying anyway? I mean, pig is considered dirty, although they're very clean animals. Yeah, I guess it's just the relation. It's not that pigs sweat a lot. I don't know, do they? It is not 6%. I know whenever I get over eight, I have a hard time and I have to get off. So I was holding my Wahoo while I was walking. Oh, the salt's burning my eyes. I need one of those like 1970s forehead terry cloth sweatbands like the skater girls would wear. Those are actually extremely useful. And I know they're considered nerdy, but, and I guess tennis players wear them, don't they? Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, the grade has been 10 to 13. Is this fun for you or are you getting seasick? This is my life. This visual that you're getting right now, that's the day in the life of a bike packer. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna show you this view because <sighs> it's just so incredibly beautiful. Well, I guess you can see behind me, we came way down in the valley. So cheers to you if you can bike up this. By the way, it doesn't get easier. Even though I'm in much better shape, it's still, I still can't do it. Oh man, it's good. I'm exercising different parts of my muscles when I walk and push my bike. When I get to like a grade, it like levels a little bit. Maybe it drops down to six. My legs are too tired to get on the bike and pedal because I'm just tired from pushing. Look up, look at bear. Oh my gosh, yay. And this is when we get to say, wee. <laughs> Maybe we'll see some wild animals in the field. Cause there's some pretty, prairies around here. Oh boy, I think we're approaching. I think we're approaching. Hopefully there'll be some camp spots. I can't imagine it would be full on a Monday, but who knows? I wonder if it's gonna be prettier than the other little one, but at least we got up here. I have to say I'm a little disappointed. I think the little lower lake was 
prettier, maybe because it was quaint or something. There's like one campsite on the other side of the road down there, and I'm not interested in being sort of away from all the people in the bathroom, especially if there's a lot of bear activity up here. Right here is where a lot of people go. The other three campsites are right there, and they're all taken. That's like the best one. It looks like that woman's up on like a little ledge, but they are all full. Isn't that interesting? So I'm either gonna go here. One guy said walk up this trail and see. I'm so shocked that everyone was raving about oh red meadow red meadow i didn't go out of my way for this trail and i had to come on this route anyway so the good news is is that i didn't go out of my way because if i had i'd been like what oh oh look at this wow see this is where we might see animals oh my goodness i'd love to see a moose in this setting and this is actually pretty awesome for hammock there's your fire pit oh my gosh for a hammock this is the spot folks and you'd swing right here between these two trees what's back here does it just end i know that it's a piss path is what it is there's toilet paper telling you this is the best outfit for mosquitoes having a raincoat these pants shell pants it's great because it's so light the mosquitoes can't get through it it's like I know I could spray myself with that stuff it's just that it, even though that's more advanced now than it was years ago so it's not as stinky since I can't go take a shower and just just spraying some kind of chemical all over me just doesn't entice me I do have a net that goes over my head I just don't feel like wearing it right now um, you know, they, they see in like, I don't know, they see, they see an ultraviolet or something. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Initially, I thought it was peanut and butter jelly time. <laughs> Apparently, I have this thing about boiling water. <laughs> I don't really even cook that much at home. I get, I'm just that lazy, I think. So I was going to just do peanut butter and jelly. Plus, it's heavy, like the thing that holds the jelly and the peanut butter are both heavy, heavy containers, so it's kind of like the sooner I eat that down, the lighter my bag will get, but peanut butter jelly is such a great go-to, and it always tastes good, although I wouldn't recommend the pita. I put... <laughs> There's a mosquito on the lens. Dilemmas we have out here in nature on whether we should try to make a little miniature fire to boil water to have some nice warm noodles, which actually would be the perfect time because it's a little cool out or do we have peanut butter and jelly see this would be great if this was live because i would just let have you guys decide for me what i should eat for dinner and then i wouldn't have to think while i figure out what to eat i'm gonna walk over and check out the bathrooms i'm sure it's just a pit toilet that's the ultimate spot right there they're up on a ridge there's also bear boxes the fact that they made one spot the ultimate spot is like one guy just said that a lot of times people will camp here. The other campsite is down by the pond there, but you're gonna get about like five times more mosquitoes. There's mosquitoes, but they're tiny. Where was I where they were huge? I think that's when I, like, I left Boise. They were like an inch long. I still haven't decided what I'm gonna eat for dinner. <laughs> See, the problem is when I use my pot to boil the water, it gets uh, like a black crust on the bottom of it. It stinks and it's really hard to get off. Gosh, I'm so undecided right now. I really need your help. I just want someone to tell me what to do. Boy, that is really a striking mountain. Just look at that. If animals were gonna come to get water at night, you'd think they'd actually be coming from here. So maybe I do have a good chance of seeing them. Guess what I'm doing? So I am having the tuna while there's people around. So if there's any bears that get this scent in the air, I'm not alone. And I'm also gonna have peanut butter and jelly. Yay, I decided. So I can't put myself into bear canisters and these very energetic, welcoming, kind and loving people offered me a beer and a chair to sit and enjoy at a fire. They're helping me with different ideas of places I would potentially enjoy living. 
And tonight is the Perseid meteor shower. And it's supposed to happen over there. Every year at exactly this time of year. And they have mountain bikes, e-bikes that they yes. love. Trek power flies. They're on the road for about a month. Thank you for welcoming me to your little spot of joy this evening. Yeah. <laughs>